Hey, friend, Chris Vandiver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today is going to be the first video in a 30-day series that I'm calling 30 Days of Why Logic Pro Rules. Over the next 30 days, each and every day, I'm going to show you a different aspect of logic and why it's awesome and how to get a little more out of it. This is gonna be the highlight reel. It's not deep diving into the esoteric details. These are gonna be actionable details that you can use right here now for your own songs, productions, and mixes. The inspiration for this 30-day series is the fact that in about a month, this website and YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, will be three years in the running. Three years of me posting videos, content, writing posts, sending emails, and it blows my mind. This website and channel started with no ambition in mind. I really walked into it with a lot of hesitation, just like, is anybody going to care about this? I have no idea. But the channel has gone from zero subscribers to right now, at the time of this video, 40 thousand YouTube subscribers and the website went from zero visitors a day in a month to tens of thousands of visitors each and every month. So I really want to thank you so much for checking out the website, the channel and subscribing and your good vibes. It's just amazing. It's just so exciting and inspiring for me. My original goal for the website and channel was that I believe that Logic Pro is the best DAW on the market. Now, maybe whoever's watching this does not agree. That's totally fine. But as a Logic user, I think it's amazing. And I felt like that Logic was not represented well as a DAW out in the market, so to speak. You know, I felt like for us Logic users, there's not really a community for us. If you're a user of a different DAW, such as Pro Tools, you're kind of insulated by this whole idea that it's a professional tool, it's the industry standard. And, you know, if you use Pro Tools, there are forums, et cetera, and you're kind of part of that Pro community. If you're Studio One user, I mean, Personas has done an amazing job of creating a rabid fan base for their software. Ableton, most likely, producer, beat maker, they've all kind of rallied around that software. And, and those not just for those types of musicians, you know, I would say that's the vast majority and they're kind of insulated by that community. But for Logic users, I just felt like it's just not quite there because... Apple, the parent company, they're a very large company and Logic is a very small part of their company. And so these updates just kind of appear out of the ether, but that's all the communication we get from Apple. And I felt like it was important that somebody put a flag in the sand and say, this is awesome. And since the release of 10 back in 2013, we have seen seven years of huge updates, all for free since the original paid version seven years ago. And we've seen dramatic changes and improvements to Logic Pro 10 and also innovations that you can't get anywhere else. And so I was inspired to create this series of 30 Days Why Logic Pro Rules. So today I wanna to show you how to access Logic Pro's quote unquote smart tool. Now, if you come from a different DAW such as Pro Tools or Studio One, you know what I'm talking about. The smart tool is your mouse, but the mouse tool actually changes based on the context of what you're pointing your mouse at at that moment. And this all relates to the main tracks area or the main window. Now, Logic has a lot of different mouse tools to choose from. And if we use key command T, we can access all of these tools. We have the pointer, we have the pencil, eraser, so on and so forth. But we also have two menus at the top here. The left menu is our left or dominant click tool. So whatever we change this to, if I change it to the pencil, now my mouse is always a pencil, just about. If I change it to the scissors, we got scissors. And the right click tool is what is called the command click tool. So if I change this to the scissor tool, I only get the scissor tool when I hold command and then it changes. And so this is very versatile and helpful, but I wanna go one step further because I think the smart tool paradigm is really the best way to work in logic. So let me show you how to access that. I'm gonna change this back to my marquee tool. And I'm gonna to go to Logic Pro 10 preferences under general. And under general, there's a tab called editing. And right here we see pointer tool and tracks provides. And we see fade tool click zones, marquee tool click zones, quick swipe and take editing, which we'll dig into in a different video. And these are your quote unquote smart tools. So let's just turn these off for now. At the moment, if I zoom in here, my mouse, no matter where I hover it, is always the pointer tool. And if I change it to the pencil tool, now it's the pencil tool in some circumstances. And, you know, though we have a command click tool, if I hold command, I can make it selection with the marquee tool. It's not the most helpful, right? I've just created a region. And I, I don't really like working in this manner because 
Because I think many of us are very used to working on a computer. You're used to pointing and clicking around with an arrow or a pointer tool when you work on a computer. I think switching the dominant tool to anything else is not comfortable, it's not natural, and it just creates more problems than it helps. So instead, let's go back to Logic Pro 10 Preferences General under the Editing tab and enable these click zones. So click zones, just think smart tool. Now, when I close this menu, if I hover my mouse over the upper half of this region, I have the pointer tool, so I can cinch this up, I can click and drag it. If I hold Option, I can copy it to the next track. But if I hover my mouse in the bottom half of the region, we now have the marquee tool, and the marquee tool is very helpful. We're able to, you know, make a selection, so to speak, and if I press spacebar to start playing, it will play from that particular point. If I make a selection with the marquee tool and then hit play, it's going to play from that point. And playback stops at the end of the selection. But what I love about the marquee tool is that you can quickly split regions up. So let's go down here. If I just double click with my marquee tool, I've now split these two regions. If I make a selection with the marquee tool and then use the pointer tool by hovering my mouse back in the top half of the region, click. We've now split it again. And if I actually had the cycle button enabled in the top here, I can right click on it and then I can auto set locators by marquee selection. So let's now make a marquee selection and you can see the cycle range is enabled. If I press C to enable it, now the cycle range will follow any selection. So now playback will repeat instead of just stopping at the end of the selection. Right out of the gate, we get the pointer tool, we get the marquee tool. Also, if I hover my mouse, let's go look for an audio file. I don't have one, so let's bounce this one in place quickly. Now, if I hover my mouse in the upper left and right-hand corners, I have a fade tool. So now I can add a fade in or a fade out without having to switch the tool whatsoever. And if I separate this region, I can add a cross fade like that, just by hovering in the upper right or left-hand corner of a region. So now we have the natural workflow of the pointer tool, clicking and dragging and selecting things. We have the marquee tool available to us so we can make selections, split regions, set up cycle ranges or playback. And we have the fade tool at our disposal so we can very quickly add fade ins, fade outs, and cross fades. And this now frees up our command click tool. So I always leave the command click tool as the marquee tool, and I'll show you why. If I turn on automation by using key command A or clicking on this button here, we don't have click zones within automation. And so you might think, well, that kind of ruins the idea of a smart tool. But now when I hold command, I have the marquee tool and I can make selections of automation and make adjustments as I deem it necessary. And we have the pointer tool to adjust our automation nodes. There's so much more that you can do with your mouse in Logic, but so you can get immediately down to work in Logic, Want to make sure that you had the quote unquote smart tools enabled or really click zones enabled in Logic so you're off to the races. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks so much.